Hi, and welcome back to the HCC TV Student Lounge. This is a show done by HCC students for HCC students to give our opinions in news, entertainment, and what's going on or in your school. My name is Kai Argo. So today we actually have a special edition of this show. So we're going to be talking to an expert about job and dream jobs. So stick here. And today we also don't have Carolina. She was feeling a little bit under the weather, but we have a really special person. Benjamin, how are you? Hello, Kyle. Thanks for having me back as the guest host. So all is good. Um, so today we're also joined by Francisco, Josh, Andres, Eric, Kennard, and Vincent. We'll also be joined by our guest, Rick Gillis, who's here to talk about how to get your dream job, which is the big question of today. How do you get your dream job? What, what can I do to get my dream job? So Kyle, uh, do you have a dream job that you want to get one day? Anything, anything out there, a specific career that you want to go into? You know, like, I feel like I've changed so many times of like having my dream job. And I think that's makes part of the process. You know, we're going to talk to Rick more about this, but I feel like it, it's really hard, especially when you're a kid and you're growing up, you like trying to figure out what's a dream job. What do you want to be in five years? Those are always really hard questions to, to be answered. I, I think at this point, my dream job is uh, being able to have my own production company and, you know, create commercials, shoot short films. I think that's my goal. And, you know, I've been working towards it already. I start, you know, I, I do my own videos. I have my, my equipment. So I'm working towards that to the point that I can even start hiring people. You know, I'm going to need some editor. Okay, Benjamin. Okay, Francisco. So you guys better better be good with me so I can, I can grab you out in the future. Cool. So first of all, let's ask the rest of the people, you know, like what would be their dream job? So let's start with uh, uh, Francisco. Do you have a, a dream job, Francisco? I do actually, Kayo, and my dream job is actually to edit for your production company. You hit it right. You hit it right on the head, Kayo. But if I had to pick a second, w way, way less interesting dream job, it'd be to be a screenwriter. Uh, I've always wanted to. I've always wanted to write for TV and movies, and um, I've never really known, like, you know, until until I started uh, going to school here, I didn't really know what that process was like. Um, but now I, or now that I've, you know, begun to learn about cameras and the writing process and development and development, I'm really interested in writing. So I think I'd like to go into that. Okay. So Eric, what about you? What's your dream job? Okay, Kyle. Well, my dream job is to become a filmmaker. Uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, directing films, whether it's a entertainment movie or making a documentary, but I honestly am a big time, uh, screenwriter, very similar to, uh, him as well. I've written at least 10 scripts over the past few years that I hope to one day be turning into movies, but um, I'm very passionate about filmmaking of all types. So if I can, I got my degree. I want to go ahead and pursue uh, filmmaking of some type. Um, also want to learn more about editing, so I'm all for becoming an editor as well. But anything in the film industry is who I want to be. Thank you. That's pretty cool. And uh... So I want to hear from Josh. I see he's but like looking for an employment. So Josh, tell me about you. Do you have a dream job? You know, I don't know if I could necessarily say I have a dream job because I never really had an idea ever since I was young. Like I could see, envision myself doing a lot of things like being a garbage man or the guy who like uh, does lethal injections for people. I'd say I'm down to do anything at least once. Okay, that's a good perspective, you know, and, and, and again, you always, you can always change your dream job, but of course, if you start working on it earlier, you know, the chance of achieving, I think it's higher. So, but a lot of hard work, you know, we're going to talk to Rick about that. So I don't want to give too many spoilers. So, and to finish this question with the dream job, I think we actually have also Vincent. So let's go for, uh, to Andrews first. So what's your dream uh, job, Andrews? Okay, uh, Kyle, uh... For me, my dream job is uh, like same to you. I, I I would like to have my own company, make different uh, film projects. But another another option is I really want to work in a documentary and travel around the world and know different cultures, different people. I think this is my dream job. 
Okay, that's cool to hear. So we're gonna move on to Vincent, but before you're probably gonna notice what's going on. So Vincent, as we mentioned before, he loves video games, he works with that. Uh, he's been putting up some animations, he actually has an avatar who's gonna be replying for him. So I'd like to ask, so Vincent, what's your dream job? Hi Kyle. Well, for starters, my dream job, I would like to do anything in the real world because I'm stuck in this box. <laughs> Help, get me out of here. <laughs> All right, but for real though, my dream job, I always wanted to create video games. I've been playing video games my whole life, so I thought, hey, why don't I make games? Make something that other people can enjoy. Can enjoy. I want to make something like, you know, this background over here and this character. I want to make something like this that anyone can use. So, yeah, anything in the gaming field would be would make me happy. That's pretty cool. I like that. So, uh, well, let's watch the video you make, right? You, you did a video about like a job interview or something like that. So let's watch this video because I think people are going to enjoy. So give them one second. So tell me why every time I go to a job interview, they always ask me, Why do you want to work here? Because I need this money. I need this coin. I'm broke. So a few days ago, they called me back and they asked me if I wanted to be the manager. And now I own this Kmart. Oh my God. Well, <laughs> we wish things works like that, right, Rick? So what do, you, what do you think about it? Is that easy to become a manager today? Well, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. But I'll tell you what, I think that's a pretty good start. And uh, Vincent, you got to keep doing what you're doing. It's going to take a lot of practice, a lot of work, but you can get there. Um, and interestingly, Vincent, I don't know if you're aware of it, but Texas A&M, right up the street from here, is one of the best animation schools in the nation. I think all of their graduates get picked up by the big majors in Hollywood. And you're already on your way. You're working it. So I hope that's helpful to you. Oh, my God. Really? I'll look into that right now. As soon yeah. as I get out of this box. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Figure a way out and then and then give me a call. <laughs> so, um, so, Rick, let's start uh, by, uh, first of all, why do we have you here? Why? What's so important about, you know, you that makes, you know, like we believe in trust in you. So you're the expert okay. in job research. Is that true? Uh, let me tell you what's interesting is I didn't, um, as we were talking before we, we started taping, um, I didn't plan on doing this. This was not at all in my plans. As a matter of fact, you guys were asked your dream job. When I was your age, my dream job was to be a rock star. That didn't work out, but I'll tell you what, I'm still playing. I still have a little home studio and I do record, but you ha guys haven't heard any of that. So anyway, um, the fact is, I will tell you that it's practice, practice, practice. You know, they ask the questions, you may hear this, or maybe you've already heard this before. The question is, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. That's what everything you guys said, because you mentioned a screenwriter, film director and a writer. Um, we did have a, de a Department of Corrections guy here. Um, Andres wants to own his own company, film commentary. And uh, Vincent wants to do video games. And all of that is about practice. It's getting started at some point where you're probably going to be an intern, which, excuse my language, maybe it's not appropriate for this broadcast, but interning's hard and it can suck. Uh, but it is what it is. Um, one of my sons is a recording engineer in New York City for many years. He's not doing that any longer, but he was. And I remember his first weekend, his first session, all he did was, you've heard it before, empty ashtrays and do the Coke bottles, right? And anything else that was there. But he ended up being at that studio for nine years, met some serious players of people you would know about. But, um, and this, this is current. This is just recently he left, like in the last year or two. But uh, he started out at the base and he ended up producing, recording. And so that's what it takes. There's no question about it. But, you know, I want to tell you guys, let me, let's talk about, I want to talk about job search. Well, I guess I need to tell you a little bit about how I got here. Um, back in 1997, a couple of years after I moved to Houston, I helped launch the very first job board in Houston. And that was strictly and purely a sales job. But by calling on hiring managers, small companies, big companies, staffing companies for 10 years, I learned that what I was hearing, what I was seeing and hearing from people who actually hired 
was not what I was hearing when I went to different job search events, ministries and stuff. So I started writing books. You can see some behind me. I've written four books on job search. Um, and one of the things I want you to know, the promote book behind me, and listen, you can get them. I'm not pitching it, but that promote book has a very important subtitle and it's your work does not speak for itself. You do. I stand by that. I don't care if you're brand new, brand, you know, brand new young coming out of college. I tell that to people who are CEOs. This is not about bragging. It's not about boasting. It's about sharing and informing. And that's really, really important because there's nobody who's going to promote you, but you period. Now, if you get somebody who will slap you on the back and help you along, that is super. Don't ever count on that. So I spent 10 years representing job boards that led to speaking. I hosted a TV show here on HCC TV. It was called Get a Job. We did 33 half hour episodes and um, I've spoken all over the nation on job search. So yeah, um, so currently I am in the process of looking for a job. Um, so one of the questions that I get a lot at these interviews and I kind of see myself get stuck at is when they ask, what are your your three strengths and what are your three weaknesses? Oh, and then, Benjamin. So this is the that. famous line and I always get stuck on my weaknesses. I guess my one of my weaknesses is not knowing my weaknesses. So what what's some weaknesses that I can have that would make me look good? <laughs> Benjamin, that is an amazing question. And let me tell you what, I can be a jerk. I mean, we can all be jerks, right? I don't care, male, female, black, white, brown, we can all be jerks, but I'll tell you what, that's a question I won't answer. Now that's me and you gotta have the attitude, you gotta get there because I will tell you, I am here to discuss my value and my accomplishments and my achievements and how I can contribute to your organization. Talk about my weaknesses, that's for you to tell me the first year on the job and I'll work to make them better. Because I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh, I'm impatient, I'm, heck no, I'm not gonna set myself up for failure. So I think it's a trick question. I hate it. I won't accept it. So what it is, if there's any problems, you need to point out to me what I need to do to improve and I will work on making it better. Shut up. Don't say another word. That's what I would advise you. That's a good question, Benjamin. I haven't heard that in a while either. That's a really, really good question. Well, I'm glad that I'm that intellectual. No. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. But, you know, let me tell you something, guys. I want to say something that's really important because when you're first starting out, and it doesn't matter if it's, I mean, high school, associate's degree, a, a bachelor's degree, anything higher, whenever you're first starting out, I don't want you to treat job search. Well, let me qualify this a little bit. You are a first time job seeker only once. Once you get a certain latitude, an employer will give you a chance to kind of screw it up, you know, drop the ball, whatever. But after you have started working, you now have to put on your big boy pants because you're competing with everybody out there experienced or not. And so I want you to keep in mind that your first time out, yeah, you can, it's kind of like being a freshman in high school. You get away with a lot of stuff because you're just dumb. You don't know the rules. But after you've been working, that's out the door. So I'm going to tell you right now, always treat every job uh, approach professionally and the same thing. And let me explain something. And I please, anybody watching this show, I hope you'll never, never, ever forget this. The only way you get a job, the only way is that you're going to express to somebody how you're going to make them money or you're going to save them money. It's that simple. If you're going to cost me money, I don't need you. It's just that simple. Make me money, make money for me or save money for me and be able to express it. Now, one of the things that I do when I work with clients and I'm really not doing that so much anymore because I am writing mostly, but what I have always done is I have always required my clients and this is for young people as well. And I've worked with CEOs all the way to new college graduates. Um, I require my clients to put together an accomplishments inventory. And this is six to eight. And the, the more professional you are, I require eight to 10, 10 to 12 accomplishments. I want personal best accomplishments. I want you to be able to tell me the who, what, where, when, why, and how you did what you did. Because accomplishment is how you're going to get hired. Somebody's going to believe that you have done something that you can do for them. And this goes to one of the things that I tell people, and boy, this gets uncomfortable when I talk with professionals, but I ask people, do you know what your commercial value is? And people just go, what are you talking about? What do you mean your commercial value? Let me tell you what that means. That your commercial value is what I will pay you to do what you do. 
Now, if I can pay somebody less money who will do a better job, your commercial value is not as high as you thought it was. If you're the best around and you can express it to me in your accomplishments, and I hire you and I prove and you prove yourself to be correct, your commercial value is probably higher than maybe you think it is. So that also goes back to that whole idea about applying for a job that might be a little bit above where you're at right now in terms of skill set, experience, or whatever. But do not be afraid to push and test your commercial value. Yeah, sir. Question, real quick. Of course. Um, so how would I get my resume in front of someone who hires? I'm just kind of curious about that. Uh, Eric, that is the reason I stay so busy because there are several different ways. First of all, if you know somebody who knows somebody, personal recommendation is always the absolute best way. But I'm going to tell you, how many of you guys are on LinkedIn? Okay, I want to make sure everybody gets on LinkedIn because that is how people network anymore. And it's interesting because LinkedIn has tried very, very hard over the years to get more college students on LinkedIn and it's not happening. And I'm going to tell you, that will give you a foot up. And you guys connect with me, LinkedIn. Just find Rick Gillis, you'll find me. I'm an open networker, I accept all comers. When I find out you're a dope or something stupid, I'll, I'll drop you, I'll delete you. But I, I am an open networker. Now, not everybody is. I mean, if you want to go out right now and connect with Oprah, it ain't going to happen. She's not an open networker, period. But me, you bet. And I have over 10,000 contacts and followers. So if I know somebody, I am happy to make an introduction on your behalf. That's not referencing for you. That is making an introduction. So Eric, that could be a way to do it. Um, the other way is to just go through the online application process. And that is how things are done now. And that's a software based thing. And I'm going to tell you the online application, or maybe you're hearing it as the ATS, the applicant tracking system online, they are brutal. They are designed to crush you before you get to the end of it. So you'll quit. And I'm not joking when I say that. They are, they take anywhere from 45 minutes to two hours to finish one online application. Now, as an entry level, it shouldn't be that, that difficult. But as you get to working and getting professional, they're very hard. And uh, the fact is, you have to know the game. And I will tell you, my job book behind me does explain the game because that's when you have to be playing keywords. The, and understand that the software works this way. Here's the job posting. And there's all these terms that are in this job posting. The resume, that the online application that comes through into the system that most closely aligns with that job posting, in other words, the terminology in your resume or your online application matches the, the job posting terminology, that's the one that gets you, that's the one that goes to the top of the pile. Now, let me explain something, and this is really important, so pay attention to me. I invented a process many, many years ago with one of my very first books, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna preface this by saying, don't do what I'm gonna tell you because this actually got me a little bit of a write-up in the Wall Street Journal when I did this in my first book, which is like in 2006. I taught people to copy and paste the entire job posting, put it at the bottom of their resume, white it out, reduce it to a one-point font, and it was disappeared. So when the recruiter printed it out, the whole job posting was there and it, because it matched 100% exactly to the job posting. That's called cheating. Now in those days, it was technique, it was savvy, it was me knowing how the game was played. And so I'm not joking when I say the Wall Street Journal gave me a little bitty tiny write up about that. And it got me a little bit of noise. I still see young people on YouTube talking about doing this, copying the job, pasting it at the bottom, reducing it to one point, submitting it. Now the software reads that so that if it sees you doing this, your resume is considered deceitful, it is blackballed, and it is removed from consideration. So don't do this. But the point is, if you'll go and look, matter of fact, I need to explain something to you really important right now. If you go right now, if you go to rickgillis.com, my website is, is covered up because I work together for my new book and all the stuff that's happening. But there is a letter J, just a little letter J out there floating. If you'll click on that letter J, it will take you to my sample documents and it'll take you to my YouTube channel. And the reason I'm telling you this is because you need to look at the entry level formatted resume that I have in there. The resume formats that I use, that I develop, that are in the job book behind me, um, all that information is free and I have a YouTube channel back there. So those samples are free for you to use. You will notice at the bottom of my document, I have a keyword section. 
It is apparent. Now, keywords are the lingo of your industry or your targeted industry. If you can talk about it, it's a keyword. And if it does not already appear in your resume, it's okay to put it at the bottom because you can address that. Now, that's what's important about keywords. You don't, you know, if you're into marketing, you can put marketing. You don't have to repeat them a bunch of times. That doesn't help, but just putting that term in there. So, keywords at the bottom of my uh, entry level resume, I consider the most important component to that document because this is about taking those keywords and matching or getting found by the software so your resume will go to the top of the pile. And listen, when you're using the online application process, make sure you insert as many of those keywords as you can. The lingo of your industry, the, the terms that are in the job posting, and any words that you can think of or have heard of, discuss it. That's what keywords are about. Uh, Rick, I also, since we're talking about resume, uh, what's the most important thing on the resume and what's the least important thing on the resume? <laughs> Okay, that's a great question, Kayo. Thank you for that. Um, okay, guys, I'm going to put it, I'm going to hit the least important thing last. The most important thing is what I've just told you, how you're going to make me money or save me money. Um, if you look at my format again, you're going to see accomplishments. I want the hiring manager to get excited when they see your accomplishments. And listen, guys, don't think that just because you're in college and you're at HCC or anywhere else, you have done something to make it this far. You're host, you're doing a TV show. You guys have accomplishments. So if you don't think about it, find me on LinkedIn, hook up with me, connect, let me talk. I'll help you through some of this stuff because it's not difficult, but everybody has accomplishments, especially I've, I've written resumes for brand new college graduates that we spent most of their time talking about what they did in high school because in college, all they did was study. You know, and they got good grade points or they did this or they did that. But um, the fact is the least, so that's the most important thing, I think. And then of course your work history and you guys are all doing this stuff. So you've got some history to show for employment that you've held. The least important piece of information guys, and I do not want you doing this, please, please, please make me a promise. Do not put your name at the top of your resume in 47 point or 86 point because you're not fooling anybody. The least important piece of information on your resume is your name. And I know that's the most important thing to you, but the fact is you're wasting good real estate up there when you should be telling me how you're going to enhance my business that I'm going to hire you for. So the that's, that's it. The most important is accomplishment. Make me get excited to call you, to bring you in for an interview, to introduce you around. And listen, entry level, it's always the same. It's always the same. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with saying, look, I just recently graduated. I'm going to be graduating and I'd like an opportunity to boom. Uh, Rick, I want to ask you, do you have any advice for the international students that want to get a job here in the United States? You know, I'll tell you what, Andres, everything I have talked about is the same, exactly the same for you. Once you get the credentials and once you're available, I'm going to tell you right now, the fundamental thing, Andres, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Colombia. Okay. I don't know how many companies in the United in the United States, or I should say better Houston, need somebody who are fluent in Colombian in, in to read and write Colombian, the Spanish, the, the Latin languages. That's what you ought to try to see if you can find somebody who needs your skill set. Because if I walked into a place and they wanted me to speak Colombian Spanish, I can't do it. I can't do it. You can, but you also speak English, which I can do. So you need to find somebody who needs that that additional value that you bring by being from by being fluent in another language. You know, a lot of people. I mean, I have my wife speaks Spanish, but not business Spanish. So you could speak business Spanish, and especially and especially if it's a country a, a company that's trying to do business in Colombia. Does that help you? Oh yeah, too much. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, so before we close, does Vincent, Francisco, Josh, you have a question for him? Yeah, I have a really quick question for Rick. This is an easy layup question. So if you're applying for jobs and you've been doing it for a while and you're not having any success, how do you stay motivated to keep going? Oh man, uh, Josh, that's an amazing question. You guys ask good questions. I got to tell you. Josh, we're in COVID right now, and that's a tough time to be doing anything. And I'm talking to people who are highly professional, who are unemployed, who are having the same problem. So I got to tell you, the best you can, shuff it off, fluff it 
off, keep going. You know, it's like I've always told people, you're only looking for one job. You're not looking for, you know, the whole pattern. So keep trying. And listen, I will tell you this though, there's nothing wrong with calling somebody you interviewed with and asking, what could I have done better? There's nothing wrong with that. Now I'll tell you what, most people aren't ever gonna do that. But the fact that you do it, and let me tell you another thing, if you don't get the job, I've never had a problem me personally, and it's never happened to me, but I know people this has happened to, to call them up and say, listen, I appreciate that I didn't get the offer, but I would like you to know that in the event the candidate you hired does not make it, I'm still interested. It's a real friendly way to put yourself out in front and they go, wow, maybe we made a mistake with this guy. He's really pretty cool. So that's what I would say, but Golly, and, and you know, in the time of COVID, it's it's rough out there, man. It's rough, and I'm not saying it's going to get any easier, um, especially for you guys that want to be in entertainment and in associated fields, because um, we know you guys know that the big studios just aren't even producing right now, and there's just thousands of talented people that are they can't even wait tables right now, you know. So I appreciate what you're saying, and I, I hope that's helpful to you, and I hope it's not discouraging. Just keep going, Josh. Yeah, so Rick, I, I know sometimes, you know, we look, seek out for jobs and sometimes we're not really sure about that job or is that really the career that we want to jump into? Is there any sort of like test out there or something that I can do to like put me in the right space, like something to look at my personality, what I would be, what I would be good at, something like that out there? You know, Benjamin, there's all kinds of assessments out there and I would Google it first and see if you can just find some of the freebies because uh, the freebies are all about trying to hook you in to go spend lots of money. Um, personally, I'm not uh, well versed on assessments, so I don't necessarily, I don't distrust them. I don't necessarily trust them um, because I think they're really always something that's trying to set you up to go spend a bunch of money so we can train you up in whatever it is you they, they point out you need. But I think honestly, in, the, in your heart of hearts, you know what you're good at, you know what you can do and listen, I told you guys this earlier, do not brag, do not boast, do share and do inform wins and then listen to what people say. And anytime you're involved in a project just like this one, at the end of the day, own, ask the, the masters that be around here, the people at HCC, the people who are producing the show, uh, the people who are not on air, ask them, how did I do? What can I do better? Be prepared for and ask for honest answers, honest feedback. And that goes for any job you do. Ask for honest feedback, take it, make a change. People will notice. Perfect, Rick. Well, um, I think we're uh, done to it. We actually spent a lot of time and I feel like we still have so many questions and I think we, I wish we could fit everything in just one show. Uh, maybe we can have you in the future to talk more about, you know, not just the process of the interview, but actually like after you get a job and how do you proceed with that. But uh, we would like to, you know, say thank you for being here, Rick. I think it was really helpful, and I think uh, we definitely wanted to have a show like this so we can help the students, and help ourselves, trying to find a way, you know, to uh, make the process of an interview easier for us because there's a lot of pressure, you know. So I think this show is gonna help people to calm down a little bit, you know, give hope that it's possible. You know, there's jobs out there. I know things are a little tough for now because of COVID-19, but. Uh, you know, there's new opportunities. There's always new opportunities. So we got to think about this. Thank you for having me. And let me tell you what, everybody you're talking to, everybody you're interviewing with, even the CEO, they all started out at the same place. They relate. It's okay to be natural. Don't be a jerk. It's okay to be yourself. Perfect. Yeah, I agree with that. So, so yeah, Rick, well, let's, let's close here right now. Thank you again for being here. And well, and guys, stick to the end because we're gonna have the uh, funny meme of the week or the funny video, so stay to the end. Thank you so much for watching and I see you next time. Well, thank you so much for being here. We had a great show today, guys. So we'll see you on the next one next week.